us. Uh, I'm going to read a reading from Bird's Christmas Carol. It was Christmas morning, and before the earliest Ruggles, Ruggles could awaken and toot his five-cent tin horn, Mrs. Ruggles was up bustling about the house. It was a gala day in her family, for her nine children were invited to a Christmas dinner party at the great home of the birds, and Mrs. Ruggles had been preparing ever since the invitation arrived. Breakfast was on the table promptly at seven o'clock, and as soon as the scanty meal was over, Mrs. Ruggles announced the plans of the day. Now, Susan, you and Kitty wash up the dishes. Peter, you spread up the beds so as I can get started on a new suit for Larry. I ain't satisfied with his clothes at all. I thought of a way last night to cut up my old plaid shawl and make him a suit, sort of scotch style with fringe around the bottom. And now let's see, oh, um, Sarah Maud, I thought of a way for you to take the buttons off your uncle's old policeman coat and sew them in a row up your green skirt. Oh, um, you kids hop into bed with Larry while I wash out your underflannels. It won't take long for them to dry. Now let's see, and then stockings. I almost forgot. I counted the whole lot of them last night, and there ain't but 15 no matter how you count them. You go over and ask Miss Cullen to lend your pair and you'll bring some candy when you come home. Now let's see, and then as soon as, you younger kids can go out and play, and as soon as it's noon, why, Sarah Maud and me are gonna give you the darndest scrubbing and combing and dressing you ever had in your life and likely ever will again. And then I'm gonna set you down for two solid hours training in manners. And there ain't no fooling either. All we gotta do is eat, grumbled Peter. Yes, and there's more than one way to eat, and you got a heap to learn about it, Peter Ruggles. Well, the little Ruggles kept from underneath foot so successfully, and the big Ruggles struggled so well that by one o'clock, nine complete toilets were laid out on the bed in grandeur. Now Sarah Maud, where's red up and can begin? I got a pot and a kettle and a boiler of hot water on the stove. Now Peter, you go in the back room and do yourself. Sarah Maud, you take the three youngest and I'll take the other four and you scrub them and rinse them and I'll finish them off. Well, Sarah Maud couldn't have scr struggled, uh, scrubbed any harder if she'd been scrubbing the kitchen floor and the little Ruggles bra bore it bravely. By four o'clock, they were all scrubbed and dressed and combed, ready for finishing touches, linen collars for some, neckties and bows for other. A magnificent green uh, breast pin was sewed on Peter's tie, and Eureka, the Ruggles were dressed, and Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. A row of, ki of chairs were uh, down the middle of the kitchen floor. They took their turn according to age, Sarah Maud at the head, Larry at the foot. Mrs. Ruggles seated herself in front of them, viewing them proudly. Well, if I do say so myself, I never saw a cleaner, more stylish mess of kids in my life. Do wish Ruggles could see you now. I um, have often told you about the McGrills. Goodness knows I've got reason to be proud. My uncle was on the police force in New York City and I won't have my kids fetched up common like some folks. Now we're gonna try a few things and see how you get along. First of all, Let's see how, oh, wait a minute, Sarah Maud, when you first get there, we don't have enough decent hats to go around. Don't know if I'd let you use them if we did. So when we get there, you say, well, Mother thought it was such a short walk and such a pleasant evening, we'd better leave our hats to home. Now speak up, Sarah Maud. Um, 
Mother and mother thought it was such a short hat, we'd better leave our walks to home. Oh, they were just uh, spread giggles all over the room. Now, what am I going to do with you? I guess I'll have to learn it to you, word for word, which she did, until Sarah Maud thought she could stand on her head and say it backwards. Now, all of you get out there in the bedroom, and let's see how you're going to come out. Oh, it sounded like a herd of cattle had been loose, and the little ones came out giggling, and Larry at the, hand, at the end came tumbling head foremost. There, I knew you'd do it in some such fashion. Now you get back there and try it again. And Larry, if you can't come in on two feet, you can stay at home. The matter assumed graver respect. And they came in lock, step, lock step, single file, looking like they were had a haunted expression on each face. There, there, that's worse than ever. Now you go back and try it again. A dinner party is to have fun. Now I want to see how you're going to do it this time. The third time brought deserved success and they came in and took their places. Now said Mrs. Ruggles, let's try a, a, a few things. It's easier. How are you? What, Mr. Clement, what are you going to say to make yourself good company? Who? Me? I don't know. Well, you're not going to sit there like a bump on a log and say nothing to pay for your bills, are you? Ask Miss Bird how she's feeling. Ask Mr. Bird if he's had a busy season. There, now it's awful hard to act stylish all the time standing up, so we'll pretend that you're sitting down. Now, let's see. Sarah Maud down to Peoria. If they have napkins, put them in your lap. The rest of you tuck them in your neck. That's right. Now, don't eat with your fingers. Don't grab nothing off of one another's plate. Don't stand up and grab something until you're asked. And if you never get asked, don't stand up and grab it. And if, uh, and don't spill nothing on the tablecloth, because likely as if you not, Ms. Bird will send you away from the table, and I hope she does. Kitty, you leave your handkerchief on your lap so Peori can use it if she needs it. And I hope she'll know when she does. Now let's see, we're going to try a few things. Uh, Mr. Clement, would you care for cranberry sauce? Bet your life! Clement McGrill Ruggles, don't you tell me you'd say that at a dinner party. I'll give you just one more chance. Mr. Clement, would you care for cranberry sauce? Yes, ma'am, thank you kindly, if you happen to have any handy. First rate. Uh, Miss Kitty, do you care for uh, white or dark meat? The color ain't no difference to me. Whatever nobody else wants is fine with me. Very good indeed. Uh, Miss uh, Susan, do you want hard or dark sauce with your pudding? A little of both, please, and thank you kindly. Peter Ruggles, that were all right. Don't you laugh. I wish I could get it through your head. It ain't so much what you say that matters as how you say it. And you stop uh, screwing that necktie pin around or I'll take and sew it on Clemmer Cornelius. Now let's see. Is there um, anything else you'd like to try? Oh, me? My gosh, I'm so plumb full of manners now I can't stand up. If you tell me anything more, I won't even be able to eat. Well, you're uh, me too. Well, you two are mightily easily hurt. Now, I think that'll be all right. You young'uns are too young to teach, so you just do what the others do. And uh, Sarah Maud, about ever so often you must stand up and say, I think we'd best be going. And if they say, no, set a while, you can set. But if they don't say nothing, you got to get up and go. Seems to me like this whole dinner party is on my head. Maybe I can manage my own manners, but to manage nine manners is worse than staying at home. Oh, you'll get along all right. Now it's time to go. Now don't forget about the hats. 
and don't all talk at once. And Kitty, be sure and leave your uh, handkerchief so Peoria can get it if she needs it. And Peter, you stop screwing that necktie pin. And all of you, uh, don't forget that I won't have people asking who brung up those kids. And whatever you do, don't forget that your mother was a McGrill. <laughs>